Hi, welcome to Biology 102 Tea Time. And today I'm gonna to share with you um, some things about this part of our cell cycle. So last video, I showed you a little bit about the cell cycle interphases up here, G1, S, and G2. We have copied our chromosomes and DNA replication in S phase. And so now I wanna hone in on this M phase. And I wanna start by talking about mitosis, one of the kinds of cell division. Um, today I wanna to share with you how this process works. All right, so to get us started, I just wanna share with you the idea of what guides the cell cycle and what really controls the timing of division. And so there are lots of enzymes and proteins that are found in the cell that run some kind of checkpoints in the cell. These checkpoints are places where the cell is going to stop. It's gonna sort of decide whether it has the right nutrients or the right information or the right um, sort of organelles in order to go forward um, and divide. So I wanna sort of walk through these checkpoints really quick so that you get an idea of how the cell cycle is regulated. So a cell that is normally functioning in G1 will reach this gate, and these are almost like flags, right? That different enzymes are gonna lower um, if you want to move on, or there'll be stop gates, which will stop the cell, right? And say like, you cannot move on, or we shouldn't move on, right? And so at each of these checkpoints, these gates, the cell's gonna stop itself and then almost ask a question. It doesn't ask a question for real, but it asks it with chemicals, right? So it asks it with enzymes or proteins, things of this nature. And and so um, this G1 checkpoint, at the end of G1, the cell is stopping and asking itself, should I divide? Um, division is a lot of energy. Um, it's a lot of energy to you know, copy your chromosomes. It's a lot of energy to get the organelles ready. And so a cell that doesn't need to divide would just be wasting its time, right? So one of the questions the cell will ask at the end of G1 is, should I divide? Should I go forward and go through this division process or not? Some cells will decide, I'm not gonna divide at all, right? I'm done, I'm just gonna maintain. Um, think of cells that are difficult for you to replace if you've damaged them, like nervous system cells. A lot of those cells have entered a G0 phase, um, which kind of just goes off of G1 and loops back on itself. Um, it's almost like you're spinning your wheels and you're just normally functioning for, for the cell. Those chemicals um, will rise if a cell needs to sort of divide. Maybe it's grown too big, maybe more nutrients are needed for the cell, etc. cetera. Um, so if the cell decides to divide, um, these chemicals will lower this gate and the cell will get to move on. Um, it will first then divide or copy its chromosomes in S phase. And then G2, it will prep all of its machinery um, getting ready for division. At the end of G2, the cell pauses again and asks, am I ready to divide? Do I have the machinery in the cell to divide? Um, do I have the correct number of organelles and energy? Have I proofread my chromosomes to make sure that there's no mistakes? If the cell is fine, um, then this gate again, different chemical enzymes will lower this gate so the cell can move on to mitosis or meiosis, these cell division types. Um, in these cell divisions, there is a final gate in the middle um, that checks to make sure that um, every, all of our chromosomes are lined up and hooked up um, to what we call the mitotic spindle correctly. Um, so we'll talk about that a little bit later. So I wanna talk about mitosis today, one of the kinds of cell division. I want you to know the order of the five steps and I want you to know one to three significant events that happens in each of those steps. So that's where we're going today. So we're gonna start um, with an overview of mitosis. Where is this process leading us? So in mitosis, you're gonna start with one cell and you're gonna divide that cell into two identical daughter cells. So you start with one cell, you're gonna divide that cell, right, into two identical daughter daughter cells. And these identical daughter cells um, will be body cells. So these are going to be clones of the original cell. This is asexual reproduction. We don't want any differences in it. Um, and so we want our chromosomes and everything to be identical to that original cell. All right, so mitosis has, I'm gonna break it down into five steps. I remember this as PP mat. You can remember it however you want. Um, but our five steps are prophase, prometaphase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase and cytokinesis. Make sure you know the order of those five steps. I'm gonna go through each of those steps and I'm gonna share with you one to three significant things that happens in each of those steps. So prophase, what's the big uh, sort of things that happen in prophase? If you're an animal cell, um, then you will need, and plant cells too, you will need to pack up your DNA, almost like organizing it around a, like a garden hose or something like that that you have in your garden. You will organize your DNA and pack it up so that it is very orderly so that the cell knows how to divide it exactly. Um, so at 
at the sort of end of G2 and then beginning of prophase, you're still packing up your chromosomes um, around these histones. Once you're done packing up, then all of your uh, sort of identical copies, so remember we just made an S phase, an identical copy of every chromosome, all of those identical copies find each other and they actually join with a sticky protein um, at the center area called the centromere. And once those chromosomes are stuck together, um, they are called sister chromatids. So we form all of our sister chromatids. In a human cell, you're making 46 sets, right? You have 92 chromosomes. They're going to, all those 46 will have an identical copy. So you'll have 46 sets of those sister chromatids inside of your nucleus. Um, finally, if you're an animal cell, you have divided your centrioles in G2, and those will start migrating to the opposite ends of the cells. Those become almost like anchors that we're going to anchor tubes off of and pull our chromosomes around. So this is what happens in prophase. This is step number one. Step number two is prometaphase. In prometaphase, your nuclear membrane disappears. We have to be able to move our chromosomes around. So the nuclear membrane is sort of taken down temporarily inside of the cell. Um, and then your mitotic spindle, this like sort of group of tubes will grow out from the sides, right? From those centrioles in an animal cell. Plant cells use a modified Golgi apparatus, um, but these tubes will grow out and they will connect to each of the sisters. Um, so you'll have these sister sets around your cell and one tube will grow out and connect to one side of the sister. Another tube will grow out and connect to the other side of the sister. Once all the sisters are hooked up, you will then move on to metaphase, which is the middle or the center phase. Um, in metaphase, all of these chromosomes, once they're hooked up, they are like sort of pulled and wiggled back and forth until they arrive in a line in the middle of the cell, almost like you're on the equator of the earth. Um, something like that happens in the cell. So all the chromosomes line up in the middle of the cell. Um, this is where your cell pauses and does, does another checkpoint. Um, the sister chromatids need to be equally attached to the spindle so that they will separate equally. It's no good you pull 47 chromosomes one way and 45 another way. You want 46 to go into each cell equally. And so the cell will run a group of enzymes along that metaphase plate and check to make sure that all the spindle is attached and hooked up correctly. Anaphase is probably one of the shortest phases, typically for a cell. And in anaphase, your sister chromatids are simply going to split. That protein centromere, that sticky area that stuck those sisters together, there's an enzyme that just comes along and pinches and squeezes it, up, squeezes it so that the sisters can separate. So that's what happens in anaphase. And then finally, telophase and cytokinesis. In telophase, your nuclear membranes return, so your chromosomes separate in anaphase, they're kind of pulled to the opposite ends of the poles, and then the nuclear membrane returns around them. Once the nuclear membrane, or at the same time approximately, the nuclear membrane is returning, then the rest of the cell pinches off, and that is called cytokinesis. So telophase is the nuclear uh, sort of membrane reforming, and cytokinesis is the rest of the cell contents separating. So that's like your cytosol and all your organelles kind of evenly be being distributed between two cells. So that's all I want to say about mitosis. Make sure you know the order of the steps and one to three significant things that happen in each step. Thanks.